Hey there, and welcome to Large Format Friday. I'm your host, Matt Mirage. If you're new to the large format process or looking to get into it, be sure to get subscribed because every other Friday, we're gonna be here and we're gonna be talking about something large format. It's been about two years now since I've had a video on the channel about large format scanning. When I dropped my initial LFF about large format scanning options, I didn't cover every option out there, but I covered some of the more popular ones. But one thing myself and a lot of folks in the comments realized was my color scans, my specialty black and white scans, they were starting to have some issues. I was having some film curling issues and especially those weird little concentric circles you can get between the film and the glass called Newton's rings. I've tried a lot of options over the years to reduce Newton's rings, but one that kept floating to the top and I need to try is the Ben Horn technique. For some background, I'm an eight by 10 shooter, meaning I'm shooting big eight by 10 inch pieces of film. This is a piece of E6 or color slide film. I'm scanning those on my Epson V700, a really solid flatbed scanner, which uh, has paid itself off many, many times over at this point. But one of the things with this scanner is it comes with this flimsy little plastic, what's known as a film area guide. The only thing you can do is just place the film in this area. So as the scanner bulb on like a V700 or V750 heats up, the film can actually curl. And if you're not on a perfectly level surface, it can also start to shift, which is no good. And all the other holders on the Epson have a really nice little thing that has a frame that holds your film. This is for the original V700. Some of the newer ones only have one gap for four by five, but these all do a really good job of controlling those Newton rings because they can raise the negative or positive off of the scanner surface. So I've finally given in to all of the comments and suggestions to go ahead and try out Ben Horn's technique. And lo and behold, back in 2019, Ben Horn, fantastic 8x10 YouTuber, please check him out, link in the description below. He has a great blog post about his really inexpensive solution to working with 8x10 film on a flatbed scanner. So does this mean if you're not shooting 8x10 film, you should just click away? No, this is really good technique, and there's tools that are gonna be in here for everyone, even if you don't shoot large format. So. In Ben's post, he outlines how he's created a DIY holder out of like this rubber pet mat material that he found at Target, which I think is great, but he also provides a template for doing it yourself. Now, another eight by 10 shooter friend of mine, Mr. Kevin Fickling, who I met over in Joshua Tree earlier this year, said he made his out of inexpensive craft foam. So after printing out Ben Horn's template and printing it out and cutting it on some copy paper, I went to my local craft store and I got a few tools to make this happen. So if you wanna follow along, what you're gonna to need to make your own eight by 10 scanning mask for an Epson flatbed scanner, we're going to need a sharp blade, either an X-Acto, similar brand, or a box cutter with a fresh razor blade. We're going to need optionally a transparent ruler. I'll go into why this in a sec. And we're also going to need a rigid material to carve out that frame with the template, either a piece of craft foam or a piece of mounting board, tag board, um, archival mat board will work well, or you can follow Ben's instructions and go with that uh, pet food mat. Each piece of craft foam you get is gonna set you back maybe a dollar or two and maybe four or five dollars for a big sheet of the mounting board. Whatever you get, I recommend getting extra so you have something to catch the excess of the cut. Unless you're a crafter and you have one of those really nice cutting mats, uh, you're gonna wanna make sure you know this blade is taller than what we're cutting, so it's gonna pierce through and we don't want any cuts or ruined tables or anything like that. So one optional tool that Ben didn't recommend in his blog post, but doing a little bit of extra research, I found out that all Epson scanners are not created equal in terms of their optimal height. A lot of Epson scanners have a factory tolerance built into them. Uh, from what I can see on blog posts and old manuals, the optimal scanning height for a lot of these Epson flatbeds is between two millimeters high and three and a half to four millimeters high. And that scanner height can shift over time. So as you move your scanner back and forth, maybe forget to lock it once or twice, that scanner height may shift. So I found this really helpful blog post uh, from Mr. J. Riley Stewart. I'm also gonna put a link in the description below to his blog posts. Um, talk about how to verify the optimal scanning height of your particular Epson scanner. 
Some scanners seem to do a great job just laying something flat on the glass, my scanner included. For years and thousands of different scans, my Epson scanner has been great for putting the negative directly onto the glass. When I asked my buddy Tariq, that's kind of what he does. He just puts it right on the glass and uses the, uh, the scanning mask and, and it's good. But for some scanners, that optimal height may be a little bit higher. So on Jay Riley's blog, he outlines some instructions for getting that optimal scanner height. What we need to do is take our transparent ruler. It has to be transparent because we're using the transparency head of our scanner. So what we wanna do is place our ruler in at an angle to our scanner. So the very back of the scanner will get the edge of the ruler and then we're gonna raise it up slightly. We don't need too much rise. A centimeter or less total rise between that should be enough. To build up that spacing, all we need to do is add a few pieces of our offcuts from our crafting foam or whatever material we use to raise it up. Once we have that raised up, we wanna go ahead and open up our scanning software of choice, Epson Scan, ViewScan, Silverfast, and we're gonna to wanna to choose the highest scanning quality that's reasonable on your scanner. So I'd recommend 2400 DPI or more, and we're gonna scan exactly this area of the ruler. And it's important, once you finish that scan, leave this ruler in place. Once we've got a scan of that ruler, we need to bring this into Photoshop or some other viewing platform so we can take a look at that high resolution image. If we go along that image very, very carefully, we're gonna see areas where it's incredibly tack sharp like it should be, but then we're gonna follow along the ruler until we can find an area where it's no longer sharp. And that area where it stops being sharp and where it starts, that's our optimal height. The reason I mentioned we don't want to move that ruler after we've done our scan is once we figured out in our imaging software what that optimal range of sharpness is on the ruler, we're going to have to locate that where it sits on the scanner bed and determine the vertical height. Now this vertical height is going to be a pretty small amount, anywhere between a couple millimeters all the way up to a centimeter, so we're going to need to have another fine ruled measuring device and place that right against the scanner glass and start measuring it from there. Once you have that measurement, that's gonna tell you how thick of a material you're going to need to cut out your frame. So what you might wanna do before you cut out your frame is measure this optimal height on your scanner and translate that height that you find to the material you're eventually going to cut out. I'm really glad I did this step because if I went ahead and just used this craft foam, this particular craft foam is pretty thick. It's six millimeters thick, which is double the maximum thickness my scanner can tolerate before it starts drifting off in sharpness. This museum mounting board, however, is exactly three millimeters thick, which is perfect. There is also crafting foam you can get that's two millimeters thick. I found it was really flimsy and may not hold its shape over time, but this stuff, it's super thick and it's gonna do a great job. So after I went ahead and cut that out, now I have something that is a lot more rigid and looks eerily similar to that flimsy plastic frame that I've been using for over a decade. And to get to scanning after that, it's actually really straightforward. I just open up my scanner and unlock my head and all that good stuff. Plug it in, then fire it up. Yeah, that's the sound. So let's give it the ultimate test. I'm gonna go right to the hard stuff and I'm gonna start throwing some color film at this scanner. This is a sheet of some C41 film that I shot in the Hocking Hills region. Oh man, it's probably like five, six years ago now. And every single one of the scans from this, I loved the color, but I hated the fact that they were riddled with Newton rings. Anti-Newton ring glass, you know, trying to flatten it out. Nothing was working. Hopefully this frame takes care of it. My little anti-static gloves here. So with my lint-free anti-static gloves, take my film. Film looks pretty good. I'm gonna give it a, got my duster here. Also because this is, uh, this is gonna be raised off the scanner surface, I'm going to scan it with the emulsion side down. Usually you wanna have that emulsion as close to the imaging surface as possible. I'm gonna open this up. Give my scanning bed a little spritz. I'm just gonna lay the frame right on there. All right, let's open up our scanning software and do a preview scan. I'm in the process of teaching myself view scan and trying to get used to all the options on there, but you can do this just as well with 
Epson scan, Silverfast, whatever you prefer. Let's give this a preview. All right, uh, yeah, preview looks good. So one thing about using a frame like this, you aren't exactly gonna get every single edge of the film because what you're doing is you're creating a tray that's ever so slightly smaller than a sheet of eight x 10 film. Inevitably meaning you're gonna get some sides of the film that's cut off. In this case, I have a little bit of the top border showing and that's intentional. That's for my inversion once I have my scan completed. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up my file type uh, and get this scan rolling. I scan this file as a TIFF by the way, so I'm gonna go ahead and open up my let me go ahead and open up this TIFF file. There we go, Photoshop. I'm gonna speed up this next process. I'm going through and I'm manually converting my C41 negative. If you wanna learn how to get the best color possible out of a C41 negative by manually inverting it, I recommend checking out this two-part series from Alex Burke on C41 negative inversion. It's fantastic, he goes step-by-step -step, and it's a technique that I will always use when I'm doing eight by 10 C41. All right, so I got my inversion done, and let's go ahead and check our sharpness. Okay, 8% whatever, 16, 33. All right, let's move it around, and oh. Hey, uh, no Newton rings. That's, maybe I got lucky. Maybe C41 is not too bad with Newton rings. Let's try this much trickier sheet of Velvia 100 that I shot uh, here for the channel back in season two of LFF. All right, let's scan that one up. Okay, and taking it into Photoshop. Uh, okay, two for two, C41, E6, looks pretty good. Let's try something really, really tricky. Another film I've had a real bear of a time trying to get good scans out of is my Efke infrared film. This is a film that has made its way to the channel once or twice, and it's an expired film with a much thinner base on it. And because it's expired and has a thinner base, it can suffer Newton rings just as easily as a lot of color emulsions. Let's put this on the old frame, give it a spritz. Okay. Got our scan, let's take it into Photoshop. And there's, okay. Nope, no Newton rings. Maybe we're just, maybe the scanner's just having a really good day. Let's, let's throw some more crazy stuff at it. And the scan, no Newton rings. Okay, uh, what about... No Newton rings. Another one. Checking. No Newton rings. Okay, load. No Newton rings. Scan. No, no Newton rings. This, this can't be right because if there's <laughs> if there's no Newton rings, then that means that I've spent the last twelve years doing it the wrong way, <laughs> scanning thousands of pictures, <laughs> and and getting Newton rings and not getting the color I want. And I'm gonna I'm gonna need a minute. works. 8x10 scanner, 20 bucks, materials that anybody sells. So much time has just been wasted. Uh, yeah, 
If you have any questions, drop them down below in the comments. If you're someone that's been shouting it from the rooftops, you know, let me know I told you so. And uh, for those other questions, hit me up, largeformatquestions at gmail.com. <sighs> Thanks again for stopping by. I'm gonna just scan everything again. <laughs> All right, we'll see you.